Start recording. Start broadcasting. How's it going? I believe it's 7.30. It is 7.30, right? How's it going? Welcome to another episode of Shannon Hannigan's live here on this lovely day of... Where did I put my phone? No, I need my phone. This isn't going to work. I'm going to grab my phone in a few seconds. Uh, we're here on another special episode of... Katie is kind of absent at the moment. I'll let you guys watch some commercials while I set up. Get this light over here. I was literally running home uh, just as uh, I was supposed to be doing this show. So hopefully everything is looking good. I'm working fine. How are you guys? It is Wednesday, uh, March. Katie, we're here. She's telling me what day it was. I'm going to pop out the chat and get everything ready. Pop out the chat. Nah, that's in the way of things. Okay. I gotta rearrange this page. Sorry, uh, for those of you who just joining us, I was rushing here to get this show going. And it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna grab my phone. So you watch a commercial. I'll be back in three seconds. Actually, I'm gonna yell from this side of the room. How's it going, everyone? Just grab my phone. <laughs> I was in such a rush. There it is. I am one again. One with my phone. Uh, Chris, the host, claims to be here first. Are you here, Chris? Let's get some feedback. Show users. Yeah, I can see you there. It is Wednesday, March 14th. Takes us that long to get this all set up. How's it all going? <laughs> Let's reintroduce ourselves. Shaggy Shan here on another episode of Shan Hannigan's Live. Normally there would be two of us. Uh, Katie is busy on major deadlines once again. Uh, but worry not, we do have uh, Katie Cam, so we can cut back and forth to her every now and then. Isn't that right, Katie? Is it? Is it right? Yes, that is absolutely right. I'll be here to field your questions if you want to ask me questions. So don't worry, I'm just working away on the Cintiq, making the storyboards. All the live long day. All the live long day indeed, and all this live long day, we have a couple things to talk about. Glad you guys can join us. Uh, join us in the chat over on Ustream. Um, I guess I could open up... I could open my Facebook, but honestly, I have so many pages stuck on this wall. Uh, Chris Those believes something's wrong with Katie again. She looks flatter. I'd say she's flattered to be here on this episode uh, because she's just busy. In this talk, saying woo. In is finally joining us on the chat, not on the on the Twitter. This is uh, unique. This is interesting. Uh, a change in the winds, as they were. It's kind of like that movie Chocolat when the winds came and she's like take pawn two if we got to get out of this town and she's like no mama it was a stressful movie mm. no more tweets <laughs> it's a shame though because if you guys want to send me some like links and videos and stuff you can't really do it over the ustream because ustream does not like links because it might lead you away from ustream and they lose advertising revenue no fun at all uh how you guys all doing this episode if you have any questions for katie we can all throw them towards her i'll uh, get her up on the skype she'll be happy to answer them for you um, I see the only reason I got Twitter was for the show says in this. Oh, I'm sorry. You can also get Twitter just to follow what we're up to because we're, we're always up to useful and interesting things. It's like education all the time. You might just be like eating a sandwich all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's why there's 24 frames in film because we told you or something like that because we're just thinking about that. Uh, Chris believes her lips also don't move. Mm, we need to investigate this. No, it's because uh, going back to why I just said uh, the film does 24 frames because the human mouth talks so fast that the 10 frames that Skype does, every time Katie opens her mouth and goes, ah, and closes it, go, mm, it cuts in between that. So you only get the, mm. So you'll hear her voice when we cut to her on Skype, but you won't actually see her mouth moving. Isn't that right? Absolutely right. See how the choppiness of the frame rate is only catching every time I stop talking and take a breath like this. Just like that, just like that. That's it. That's excellent. Cool. Uh, so you've learned something <laughs> today about animation and film uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, how you all doing? If you're on the chat, you can give me a heads up. You can also, we could go to Skype or Twitter or whatever. I'm not using that right now. My page is full of crap. Speaking of full of crap, got a crap full of things to talk to you guys about because, you know, I'm on the way back on the streetcar to shoot this episode. I almost made it just in time, too. I had to set up Skype, though, so it took a little longer. Uh, a couple of things to go on about. Uh, so Spirited Away, the films of Ghibli, is here in Toronto. Uh, this happened also, I don't know if it's under the same name, but this fest of Studio Ghibli films also happened in L.A., Alhambra, blah, 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 somewhere down southwest where all our friends got to enjoy it before us. But it is here in Toronto at the Bell Lightbox Cinemas over on King Street and whatever street. 
Uh, plenty of films going on. Uh, the ones that we actually went to check out recently, uh, Katie, me, a bunch of other people, was um, called Only Yesterday. Uh, we got into saying, don't question Shag, Chris. That's right. That's what you learn on this show. You don't ask questions. You get quest answered. Mm. So uh, plenty of films. There's going to be Totoro and stuff. There's going to be Kiki's Delivery Service. Cat Returns, which is really good. Um, Whisper of the Heart, kind of the precursor to Cat Returns. We got Princess Mon, okay. Uh, Poco Rosso, Pam Poco, uh, the, the Fishy Story, the Howl's Moving Castle, and two others that haven't really been released at all, I don't think, in English, as far as I know. Only Yesterday, uh, which is a story about a lady going on a trip and having flashbacks to the kid, and the kid of her is a kid, and she does things and she reflects on it, and it's whatever. And another one... Which I don't know what's about, but there's a picture of some guys wearing jeans, and apparently there's a love triangle. So I'm like, okay, it's high pant love triangle story. That's great. Uh, we might check that one out later. But a little thoughts on only yesterday uh, in this saying, "Whisper of the heart is boring." Oh man, but it's it's not about. Here's the thing. Similarly to "Whisper of the Heart," uh, and to a degree, Totoro is kind of like this. A lot of the uh, Ghibli films aren't necessarily the big epic stories of like Disney and all these animated films tend to be where there's a clear cut villain, there's a goal, there's a girl and a guy and they get together and stuff like that and it's all happy and stuff like that. A lot of the Ghibli films, Ghibli, 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 whichever, a lot of them are more about life. They're like life stories and to a degree you can argue whether some of them actually need to be, it's, it's, it's hard because some people have the argument where King of the Hill never needed to be animated because it's so normal and mundane, the activities, that they could have just filmed it and gotten the same results. A lot of the Ghibli films are similar to that where it's life. But because it's animated, sometimes there's an expectation that's got to be like bigger than life. But it doesn't have to because animation can just be about life. You know, that kind of thing. So um, a, lot, a lot of the films like Whisper of the Heart have the pacing of life and life often is fairly boring. <laughs> it's just kind of the way it is. It's like we, we kind of hang out, do some things, and then I say, what's up? Eat a sandwich. But, like, when you film that or animate that, what do you do to punch it up? I guess you got to, like, you know, add drama and overemphasize things and get, you know, the weight of this and that happening. And so uh, you, you can look through some of the Ghibli films like uh, Totoro. And for the most part, there's fantastical elements. There's the Totoro, the big furry guy, the cat bus. Like, yay, cat bus. And the overarching uh, conflict is the mother is sick and in the hospital, and this is kind of adding tension to the family. And even, like, Totoro can't solve that. You know, so the, the big kind of dramatic moment is when Mei, the little girl, runs away because she's sad and angry that her mom's not coming home because she's still too sick. And then it's like a big panic in the village and the child runs away. And that's kind of the biggest tense action moment in the story. There was no, like, villain who was like, nah, and Torturo will be mine and put in the zoo. You know, like, that That never happened. But, like, most of the conflicts are fairly grounded and just being life. You know, there's nothing too, uh, you know, over-adventurous. Like, like, say, Kiki, Kiki Delivery Service, the main conflict is actually her losing her ability or her losing her confidence in being a witch, a good witch and stuff. But then to cap it off at the very end, there's a dirigible that, that crashes into a building and her friend Hugo or Tombo or Billy Bo, whatever his name is, is like hanging by a thread and he's going to fall. And it's like, okay, that's a little larger than life. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, but to take it all back to Only Yesterday, Only Yesterday has none of this. It is the most life of any uh, Ghibli film or any animated film I've ever seen, honestly. Like, it's more life than King of the Hill. You know, the like King of the Hill, at least, like, something weird happens. This movie, they I literally, in the middle, they spend, like, 20 minutes just talking in a car ride. And I justify it to myself being like, oh, they're really trying to give us... The scene is they're getting from a train station into the country. And you see, like, the rural lands, like, the background changes gradually, and it's, like, four in the morning and stuff like that. And it's just, like, it's just talking. And I don't care. And I want to care. Like, this isn't a, necessarily a slight against the film, but it's just, like, all the parts when it was based in school and she's a little kid are, like, funny and charming and cute and interesting. And then all the other parts of her in her real life is, like, okay, there's stuff happening, I guess. It's, eh. <laughs> you know. So, uh, overall review, I enjoyed it as a slice of life film, but really could have been cut down a little it was a little lengthy at times and it's just they, they'd stay on one topic for way too long and you're like all right I, I i live my own life to know what this is like you know we could 
move it along a little. Like there's only so much of capturing the real essence that you need. Sometimes you just want to get things going because if you know if you're paying to see a movie, that's basically the same as you sitting on your porch and looking at people. You know, <laughs> in a scene. So would the movie be better if it was shorter? Um, probably. Like I feel the parts that bored me didn't add anything anyway. Like um, they didn't make me feel like. I liked the characters any more or less. Like they, they were just kind of nothing moments in a weird way. It was just like, oh, it's more, more talking. That's cool. That's cool. I guess relationships are being made. I don't know. Yeah. So that's only yesterday. Um, let me think. What? I don't know the name of the other movie. I forget. It has something to do with a bunch of people, and it says there's a love triangle. It might be like a slice of life film too. Who knows? Uh, but it's, it's just what you're into, you know, like I, I enjoy that there are some animated films out there that are less exaggerated and big adventure and fight bad guys and stuff like that was, that's still my biggest gripe with up. I love the beginning half of up. Like my God, the opening, I openly cried twice in the same sequence, you know, it's cute when he's a kid jumping around and then finally gets to the magical faraway place. And then the old guy who was his hero turns out to be a douche. And then there's like a fight scene on top of dirigible. And you're just like, how come everyone keeps throwing dirigibles into movies to add conflict? You know, like Kiki had, let's add some conflict. Let's add some dirigible to that. You know, jeez, <laughs> is this not a good idea to have dirigibles around? Cause someone's going to get hurt. Oy. But that's, uh, you know, not everything needs villains. That's also why Totoro is so endearing, because it's just like, it's life, man, and we all have problems, but Cat Bus will fix it all. You know, sometimes we need more Cat Bus in our life. Hmm. Um, but besides that, curious to see some other ones, but most of them we do actually own on DVD, so really no points in, uh, not saying no point, but it's just, I can't justify spending to watch everything again and again in theaters. I do I do care to see Totoro again, because I've never actually seen it in theaters. I've seen Mononoke in theaters when it first came out in Toronto, which was super exciting. Because this is the era when anime was just kind of getting bigger. You know, you're the kid at school who knows more about anime, because it's not just Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball. Oh no, those fools. It's like Tenchi and uh, Ranma and friggin' uh, El Hazard and Trigon. You know, there's so much more out there and no one else really knew. But then, you know, to theaters comes Mononoke and you're like, yeah, theaters. It's not just Sailor Moon on the big screen, you know. So it was really exciting to see that in theaters. But i um, never seen, never seen uh, Totoro in theaters. It wasn't really released ever, as far as I know. Hmm. Uh, jumping back in the chit chat, we got in this saying, even say, ever seen Grave of the Fireflies? No, I haven't. I do want to see it. It's crappy that I've had the ending already, like, spoiled for me. In like plenty of music videos to songs by Snow Patrol, but um, I am curious to see it. Uh, just it, it feels like it's going to be similar to um, Barefoot Gen Gen Barefoot Gen. I started reading it and it's very depressing. It was just like the bombs go off and it's just what happens now in a society that's like not, you know, they they're not responsible for all this shit that was really going on. They're just living life and they just it's horrible stuff. But this is you know definitely need to check that one out. It's not a part of the festival. The festival does seem to be a little more family catered, I suppose, or a mainstream anyway. Um, but like my neighbor, the Amadas, is going to be playing. I still haven't seen that, but I have it. Right. I'll, you know, I'll show you right now what I have in my house. So I went back to Mississauga, just like, folks, I just borrowed all of these Ghibli films. This isn't even all of them. Uh, I think Spirit Away isn't in here. Uh, is Totoro in here? It might be. Yeah, I think it is in here. But this is all the ones that we got on DVD. Um, Sans. Uh, Spirited Away, it's on the shelf somewhere like that. But, you know, good times with Mononoke. Haven't seen My Never the Amadas yet. Castle in the Sky is interesting. It's more comedic than I thought it'd be. Um, Mark Hamill's in it. It's a bad guy, so good times. But it's, it's pretty silly. Pom Poco, haven't watched it yet. Feels like it might be long, but I don't know. They draw their balls, just to let you know. It's, it's the only animated film to ever do that for animals. Like... Freaking Kung Fu Panda. You don't see his panda balls when he's fighting. Whisper of the Heart. Uh, Innis believes it's boring. But um, when you're a writer, it speaks to your soul. Because it's all about the conflicts of, of creativity and writer's block. And there's a cat named Muta. And he shows up if you watch the spiritual successor to it. The Cat Returns, which definitely is a lot more interesting. But uh, this one is really fun. The art is really nice. Uh, the English version has Anne Hathaway as the voice. And... Uh, yeah. 
you, Carrie Lewis as the cat. It's like, how can you go wrong? So good. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Only seen it once. It's interesting. Interesting watch. It's got some moments. Got some moments. Kiki, one of my top time favorites. I love the design of the village. Like, even if it was just a movie about a bakery, I'd be completely happy. Because I love bakeries and hilly cities with tall buildings. And by the seaside. That's three winning things. Like, if I can live in any world, like, everyone's like, oh, I want to go to Avatar Land. I'm like, you're an idiot. You want to live here. Because Avatar Land sucks. Things eat you there. Here, there's a bakery. Uh, Pocoroso. Interesting. Kind of about a dude. <laughs> this one won't be airing, but uh, the Castle of Cagalistro. Uh, based on the Lupin the Third license, but directed by Miyazaki, and you can tell because uh, the Lupin character is, you know, kind of like a James Bond-ish spy era figure, but he's always been kind of like lecherous in that traditional Japanese way where he's just jumping on all the women. Here you see some maturity in him where he has like restraint. There's a scene where like the female lead hugs him for saving her, and he does this thing with his hands where he's like resists hugging her, and I'm like, oh, he's grown up a little. Interesting, interesting. And finally, boom, my neighbor Totoro. Everyone should have a plush Totoro in their house. I'm working on that. I need to be rich first. Uh, check out those films if you haven't yet. Um, let's see. Uh, s uh, some chat is probably going to... Let's see. I want to come to your house. I'm assuming you mean Shaggy. Because <laughs> uh, those says, I thought it was good, Shaggy. Which one was good? Which one? Love Cat Returns is in this. Yes. Cat Returns is actually one of my favorites. Uh, not directed by Miyazaki, but honestly, that doesn't matter. It's just so damn good. The art is, it's charming. It's a modern-day fairy tale. A bunch of people are all like, oh, it's like House of Wonderland. I'm like, shut up. It's not like House of Wonderland. It's its own thing. It just goes to Catland. It's different. You know. Why has everything got to be Alice? It's not like it's the only story about a girl going to another world. Hmm. It could happen more than once. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um... Saw maybe a half an hour of Kiki as a kid, but I was too uh, too add to sit through it, though. Uh, I saw that on Netflix. Uh, like like on Toy Story 3, Whisper the Heart. That's when I thought was good. Oh, okay. Um, Whisper the Heart isn't... A lot of these do take some patience. Like, oh, not a lot of them. The ones, once again, that are more life stories take a little bit of patience. Because it's like, you know, nothing's happening. But it's not It's it's not about nothing happening. It's, it's about life Nothing happens in life. <laughs> Check them out if you get a chance. They're fun. Um, if the festival comes your way, I know it started in uh, LA-ish area. I don't know if it's going anywhere afterwards. But right now, it's in Toronto at the Bell Lightbox. Tiff Cinematic. At the same time, the Game of Thrones exhibit is also there. Uh, you can sit in the chair of Thrones, the plastic interpretation of the chair, and take a photo. And It's very nice. I haven't actually sh um, seen the show yet. I'll get on that. Apparently it's full of incest, so we'll see what happens. Good times with King of the Thrones. <laughs> and violence and lots of other good stuff. So that's that. Only yesterday. Uh, speaking of watching things, I should just jump around. Since I'm in such a good mood, let's jump ahead. Um, have you guys ever been so happy to be wrong? You know, like you believe something is something, but then it turns out to be a lot better. Boom! Community. This has quickly become... My favorite show ever. Let's give you the backstory. So a while back, uh, how we were trying to decide what's the next series to watch. Like finished up Battlestar and stuff. Like what should we watch? So got a couple of first episodes, and one was Community, and another one was like Thirty Rock and stuff like that. Um, I watched the pilot of Community, and I just didn't like it. I don't know it just didn't work for me. The main character, uh, Jeff Winger, he was just so persistent in chasing uh, Britta, the blonde girl, and it was just like. I don't know, I, I didn't think I liked where the series was going, because it seemed like he'd just, like, be an ass around her, then do something nice, and then she'd smile, and then that's the end of that episode. Next episode, he's being an ass, and she calls him out on it, he does something nice, and then she smiles, and the end of that episode. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I just didn't care for it at all. So, that was just at the very beginning. Uh, then I started watching 30 Rock, and the days went by, and months went by. A uh, friend finally loaned me the complete season of Community. I'm like, okay, everyone's crying about Community being cancelled and stuff, it can't be the way I thought it was, maybe. Uh, it was just the pilot wasn't very good, I don't know. So I popped in the first disc, and I watched it, and I kept watching it, and I watched every episode, and I finished the season, and it was honestly the best damn show I've ever seen. I am happy to be proven wrong. I will w openly admit that. I know lots of us like to be right all the time. We like to be like, oh, well, I don't like this thing, and I'm happy it's canceled. Mwahaha! <laughs> Nay, it is honestly the funniest damn show ever. Uh, I don't want to spoil any of it. There's moments in it that just kill me laughing. 
I have to pause and like rewind and watch it again. Uh, I, I can't even. The first season was so fun. Uh, everyone you know has probably mentioned the paintball episode by now. That is jaw-droppingly good. Such a good show. So I have here in my hands Community Season 2. I am excited. I am going to start watching it and enjoying it hopefully just as much, if not more so, than Season 1. I am excited. I love the characters. Uh, the writing is genius. The editing is fun. The props, the concepts, the parodies of the genre uh, and the TV. There's the tropes they call it, I guess. I don't know. And how much they hate Glee. It's all so good. I love the show. So if you haven't watched it yet, give Community a chance. Um, if you didn't enjoy the pilot like me, give it a chance. Uh, nowadays, we do have higher expectations from pilots, which is a bit unfair. You know, uh, Lost Episode 1 is one of the greatest pilots of any show ever made. It is It grabs you, and you're like, ah! You know, uh, Arrested Development, the extended pilot, it was f hilarious. I loved it. So we, we're kind of spoiled on good pilots these days. So just, if you don't like the started Community... Don't worry, it gets so good after like the first two episodes and it's just perfect. So good. Uh, jumping in, what's everyone else saying? Agreed, Flux Fox, I have arrived. Wow, Flux Fox, you missed our whole talk about the whole Ghibli exhibits. Miyazaki movies and stuff. Oh, wellsies. Uh, so saying, yeah, in this saying, woot. And woo high five in this. Everyone is high fiving each other in the chat room. This is exciting, this is fun. Glad we're all enjoying ourselves. Uh, Katie, how's things going up on your end? over in storyboard alley if i can talk to you i was just going just dandy dandy like candy i'm just busy drawing away i too had trouble with the beginning of community but now that you have spoken the words of wisdom i will follow suit and finish the complete season and enjoy it just as much as you do on netflix very good very good one thing you have to be careful about though is season two doesn't seem to be on netflix yet and season three was cut in half because it was like canceled midway. Seems to be coming back now. And now I understand why everyone's all like, yeah, Netflix, uh, community. Yeah. Uh, there's other things like apparently there's like spin off animations. There's this kind of like Doctor Who show in community that is getting its own animated series or something now, too. I don't know what it is. Mm. We Bob 15 says chat is working tonight. Chat's actually been working. When's the last time you've been on the show, we bought? Chad's actually been working pretty good for the last while. Surprisingly. Or maybe it's just because I'm doing this from my house and Katie's internet sucks. Maybe. Because also right now we're using Cam Twist, which doesn't work on Katie's computer right now. So I could do things like show you websites. But I can't because I only have a single monitor here and I just don't have the space. Hmm. Sorry, next time. Could also get that. Remember, remember back in the early days when we had like the Skype would actually pop up at the bottom of the screen? That was before Katie put like lion on her computer and it ruined all her fun either that or chrome ruined our fun because it was all like yeah ram sorry flex fox <laughs> until they fix that unless they have i'm gonna keep ranting on it oh star fade yeah i could do oh, where's all my filters let's see desktop uh, i don't know where all my filters are i'll have to find that next time oh i should make some like nice presets like cube rotations and you guys can watch me in 3d that'll be so good uh, let's see what's going on here in this thing. Starfade. Yes, Starfade. Uh, speaking of Starfade or demanding things on chat, yesterday, I don't know if you guys uh, were watching, uh, Double Fine Productions, guys behind such doubly fine games as Trenched, a.k.a. Iron Brigade, Stack'em, uh, and a bunch of others, and historically had worked on games such as Psychonauts, Full Throttle, and Monkey Island from uh, their head dude guy, Tim Schafer, as well as Ron Gilbert, uh, finally closed last day of their Kickstarter for their new uh, hypothetical adventure game, which hasn't had a title yet or any concept art or anything. But they uh, landed at about $3.3 million from the original 400000 So that's about like eight times, if not more. I don't know the math. But uh, congratulations to them. Uh, last uh, The night of it, which was yesterday, they had a live stream on Ustream for the last two hours of... Um, like they're one of their rooms and they had a live camera going and it was a really fun show to watch you got to see like all the cast or not the cast but like all the people from double fine celebrating and this weird little thing started where um ron gilbert finally came out of his cave and went on camera and then someone on the chat was like put your shoe on your head and so we did and then that just caused this torrent for the rest of the evening rest of the two hours everyone was typing for everyone who's on camera shoe on head 
shoe on head, and then there's like this big demand for people to be shoes on head. It was a really fun show. They closed out and they had balloons and champagne and stuff and had shout outs and it was, uh, looked like a really fun time. Really fun company to hang out at probably. One of these days I'll hang out at Double Fine someday. Maybe I'll uh, we'll be like, hey, what's up? And they'll be like, hey, get out of here. You don't work here. I'm like, ah, crap. And I'll leave. I believe they're out of San Francisco. Yeah, so next time, if we go to like Ape again this year, we can stop by and be like, hey, Double Fine, what's going on? And they're like, who are you? <laughs> I have enough stories of those. <laughs> uh, San Francisco was also where uh, Viz headquarters was. The guys who like released a lot of the, uh, uh, like the Shonen Jump properties. You got your Naruto and your Death Note and Ranma and stuff from before that. And I, I walked by when I was on the bus coming into San Francisco. I, we went by this building or along the main strip, and I saw these like you know you know like the text going on like a marquee, and it said like Rumiko Takahashi's new comic is out, and I'm like wait what 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 built marquee ever says that. And I tried to remember like the street and the intersection. I finally tracked it down. It was like big giant industrial doors and in little text. It's like Viz Entertainment. Don't tell anyone. I'm like, holy shit! I found Viz. I wasn't even looking for it. Viz headquarters in San Francisco, and I'm there. I'm like, I don't see anyone else like doing nothing. So I just kind of cracked open the door and kind of wandered in. And inside, it's like there's Pokemon comics over here, and there's like things, posters over there, there's toys. It's probably like the funnest place in the city, man. Like, uh, like I know Nintendo Power is probably around there somewhere too. I'm like, oh my god, this is great. And I go to the lady at the counter. I'm like, so this is Viz, and she's like, yes. I'm like, is anything going on around here? She's like, no. Okay, bye. And then I left. And that's my story of visiting Viz Entertainment. <laughs> Guys behind all your favorite translations. Roni Kenshin, Dragon Ball, Naruto, Death Note. Good times had by all. <laughs> oh, well. So the moral of the story is don't visit the places you want to go. We all want to go visit Pixar, but Lasseter probably has a shotgun. He's waiting on the other side of the bridge. He's like, oh, yeah, just come on in. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're safe. <laughs> nah, you won't survive. There you go, unless you're invited. It's always nice to be invited because you always hear on people's Twitters like, oh, I was just hanging out over at Pixar. How'd it go? Oh, I just got a call and I can hang out at DreamWorks. That's very nice. Huh? Makes me feel special. <laughs> I want to be special someday. Wish I was special, but I'm a freak. All right, what else is going on? So speaking of watching TV shows, um, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, but it's never brought up. Uh, finally checked out that Sherlock show, the uh, BBC version of Sherlock Holmes. And I is just charming, you know. If you haven't seen it yet, exciting story, bros, is in this. Thank you. <laughs> I tend to blur it out the, into the Digimon theme. Really? I was going to stop you. It's your house, Chris. Do what you want. Mm. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, because everyone on this show knows we love talking about Doctor Who, even though I've never watched it yet. I'm still working on that. That's coming up after Community. We'll do a Doctor Who marathon. But um, finally started watching uh, a bit of that Sherlock. And it's interesting, because it's like, they're like, two-hour movies instead of a TV series, and there's like four or six of them or something like that. I'm not sure if I haven't really paid attention. But it's like you, you just get to watch a movie every once in a while, and it's really cool. And loving the characters, uh, the actor playing Sherlock is just charming and psychotic in his own delightful way. Uh, of course, uh, the guy who played Arthur Dent in the uh, Hitchhikers movie, some guy from The Office, and is going to be Bilbo Baggins, I forget his name, but he plays uh, Watson really nicely. I enjoyed it. And though some people complain, and by some people I mean Katie, complains about the uh, mysteries not being so hard or baffling to figure out, I don't really care. I think it's just cool just to see them, like, interact and talk. And especially, like, whenever they do things, like, a guy pulls up a text, like, cell phone, he's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. and up over here, all, what he's writing shows up, and it's like these text elements are like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm like, that's a really neat idea as far as a production standpoint, because usually it'd be like, over-the-shoulder shot, what's he doing on his phone, close-up, irritating. But I'm like, this is actually kind of neat. Like, they'll, they'll show people using their phones or computers, and they'll have, like, what they're doing popping up all around it, as opposed to, like, have to show the screen. I'm like, that's a really smart, really good idea. Heads up to you guys. That kind of deal. Uh, so go check out Sherlock. I don't know if it's just called Sherlock or Holmes or Holmes, modern Holmes, Holmes on Holmes in London. I don't know. It's fun times. Uh, but amongst that, there's this... Is NBC? I forget who it is, but they're trying to make their own Sherlock because like Sherlock is popular again. So why not make it set in New York? Because that makes perfect sense. Uh, they're making their own show, uh, and they finally just casted. Um, oh God, what's her name? Watson is one of the Le Lucy Liu, I believe, is Watson because you know they gotta shake it up a bit. So why have a British man play Watson? Let's have Lucy Liu. 
<laughs> I'm like, okay, go nuts. Like, whatever. But it's like, you guys are really going out of your way to, like, make this not like any of the other Sherlock Holmes. So why don't you just make a whole new series and just call it, like, Detective People in New York? You know, it's like, if, if it's really not going to have anything to do with the source material, why are you bothering? Um, but there you go. That's coming up. And the problem, the, I was reading this article, is interesting because it's like, the guys from the movies of Sherlock with Robert Downey and the guys from the BBC Sherlock are like, great. Another Sherlock is coming out, and it's going to oversaturate, and people are going to be sick of Sherlock, and they're going to move on to Tarzan or something next. I don't know. And then everyone has Tarzan in New York and stuff, and it's played by friggin' uh, Danny DeVito. I don't know. And cast someone. But it's like it's just like that kind of thing where it's just like too much of one thing. Because there's going to be like three Sherlocks in modern pop culture. You know, There's only like one Star Trek at a time, for God's sake. Sort of. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe it's going to be amazing. Justin Bieber says Chris, the host. Justin Bieber plays Tarzan in New York. Perfect. You know what? Why not? It makes perfect sense. And Jane is an equally popular singer. And then they have songs as they swing through New York on vines. So they capture the Glee audience. And everyone's happy. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of curious of that show now. I, I hope it has horrible green screen. Because it would just be like, it'd be like a Tim and Eric kind of thing. Oh, well. Speaking of which, uh, I actually watched all four seasons. Well, not there's a fifth one, I believe. But I just went on a marathon and watched like as much of Tim and Eric as I could. Interesting stuff. Very f silly. If you haven't checked it out yet, I recommend like just watching a bunch of it. Uh, there's some there's some stuff that just makes me laugh so hard. There's other stuff that I'm like, that's all right. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. But uh, definitely check it out. I don't I have no idea about the movie though. I'd have to see. I actually have to check that out with a friend who's a big uh, Tim and Eric fan. But uh, I'd be interested to see it. But uh, definitely worth checking out if you're into like sketch comedy. If you liked Mr. Show from HBO with Bob Odenkirk and David Cross, you definitely want to check out Tim and Eric because it's uh, from uh, creative consultant is Bob Odenkirk, and uh, it has like lots of the kind of my my favorite kind of comedy is the type that makes fun of genres and I think I said tropes before if that's the right word, but like it's it's able to replicate the style of an era but also mock it. So Tim and Eric does that with the kind of community television thing where it's just bad editing and awkward green screen and just awkward actors and stuff. And it's, it's, it's kind of like a train wreck of a show, but like an intentional train wreck. So it's, it's very different. It's, it was described as like a TV station in a nightmare world because everything is just off and horrible and stupid. So check out Tim and Eric. Awesome show. Great job. It aired on uh, adult swim. We can also find it, clips of it online, officially released, certain sketches and stuff otherwise you have your ways You're, you've been around these webs you know what you're doing i'm not saying nothing nothing about nothing don't worry about me just worry about yourself <laughs> uh and this doesn't like tim and air tim and removed your l too weird for me sure i completely understand that's fine i know you hate uh certain things like uh you know whisper of the heart that's fine to hate it's always good to hate but uh you know sometimes you gotta like a thing or two every now and then i'm saying <laughs> it is a little weird though sometimes a little too much where it's like yeah you guys are trying a little too hard other times it's like that's ah, really silly where like the joke isn't the joke you thought the joke was but it's another joke after that joke you're like ah incredible um, I'll say right now look up there's a sketch that I sent to Katie because I thought it was the funniest damn thing look up Tim and Eric and not Jackie Chan it's a, it's a board game commercial and it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen not because of what it is but what it does don't worry about it just check out the Tim and Eric, not Jackie Chan board game. And I was crying the first time like I watched it. What's boring? It's boring. Everyone's saying boring things. Boo. It'd be like a Disney musical, except it sucks. Says Chris the host. I think that's a reference to Tarzan. I, wait, except it sucks? I think it'd be the opposite. Like The, the, the joke is all Disney musicals suck right now. So it's got to be, be like a Disney musical. But it'd be awesome. Because it's Tarzan in New York singing and swinging. <gasps> That's what it's going to be called. All right. After you're done your retrospective on Kingdom Hearts, Chris, I need you to write me a musical called Tarzan in New York Singing and Swinging. And we can perform it here during the Fringe Festival. It'd be great. <laughs> uh, always a good time on Shane Hagen's Live. Let's check in with Katie over on Katie Cam. Katie, what's going on with them edits and making them storyboards? You know, some people think that storyboards make themselves, but what you learn in life is that they don't. I make them. All right. Thank you for that heads up, Katie. Uh, more learning here on Shanahanigans Live. 
Uh, we'll keep you posted on all that good stuff. Uh, what other things have been going on in my fun little miserable life? Let's see. Strangers in Paradise. Have you guys ever read this? You guys ever read this? Finally got around to starting to read it. Uh, is really well known. Uh, what is it from? It's like 90s... 90s kind of indie scene the kind of a really big pusher for like the black and white independent i don't know the history of it either way very interesting book i haven't finished it yet i'm just getting to it and there's a lot of them too apparently like there's you can like get the whole cast showing up in a row be like and like collect them all uh my, my first all right whenever i compliment things it's always backhanded i always have something negative to say first my first kind of like confusing part of it is there's certain things that happen in the book that make you kind of question what's we, we, we talked about this earlier. Remember, if you remember from the Tintin or the Link Link episode, as it were, uh, when we talked about Tintin, how one of the jokes really ruined the whole movie for me in a way. Not the whole movie, but like shattered the concept of what is Tintin's reality. There's a sequence with the airplane. Sorry if this spoils it. But like the airplane crashes down and Tintin's unconscious. He's sliding towards the blades. And it's like, oh, Jesus, Tintin's going to get chopped up. This isn't good. And then Haddock like is stuck on a parachute like, oh, I'm trying to save Tintin. And then he, like, knocks Tintin off out of the way and into safety. Like, yeah, he's safe. Then Haddock's parachute gets caught in the blades. He gets pulled in and goes, whoop, 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 and flies away, and it's all comedy. You're like, whoa, what the hell just happened? I thought this was dangerous, and now it's just silly, and you ruined suspense. Anyway, Strange Paradise kind of starts off doing that right away, where it's like, you're not sure if what happens in the book is, like, what, what, what's the rules of the world? And my example is basically one of the first things that happened in the book is alarm clock is going off, you know, ring, 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 ring. Uh, sorry, let's see if I can get this. And then the main character pulls out a gun and shoots the alarm clock. And then you're like trying to figure out if it's like, is, is this a common thing or is this like a metaphorical thing or whatever? It's like, is it cool that people shoot things? Will she get in trouble for having a gun? And it's just like, I, I feel like, I, like I'm overthinking it, which is horrible, but it's like, I, I'm so caught up being like, she just shot an alarm clock. Was that just a silly joke and we're all cool with this? Or if if the police... I, I just don't know. you know. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what is the tone. I think I'm getting it. What is the tone of this book? But it's like, what can happen in this world that everyone's cool with? Or is everyone just a psycho in this world? You know? So it's like, you know, in Looney Tunes, if someone drops a piano on someone, we're not going to be like, police, arrest that man! He's a piano murderer, you know. So it's just, and, and when you have a book that appears to be like set pretty much in like reality, for the most part, it's like, what is the reality of this book? You know, like there, there's always been debate when it comes to Scott Pilgrim was the fantastical things that happen in that book. Is that all just in Scott's head? Or is this a fantastical world where crazy things happen and just no one cares? Like Scott would be doing air combos and people would be like, oh, look at that. Scott's doing air combo. Anyway, what would you, and no one like, that's just that world. It's, it's, it's thought provoking. It's mind boggling. It's something you gotta. Mm. Anyway, what's going on here? Whoa, the internet. Uh, I internet of the TV. Damn it, Shaggy. Why do you do this? Dude? People are talking about things. Hell yes, says Flex Fox. Hell yes. As long as there's no Phil Collins. Why is everyone hating on Phil Collins? You'll be in my heart still a tearjerker. Especially during the movie. No. That whole sequence in the opening half of the Tarzan Disney where the baby gets chased down by the cheetah or leopard or whatever and you're just like oh man it's rough and then tarzan's folks get owned you're like ah shit but then the monkey finds baby and then they're like oh we both got what we're missing and you're like oh phil collins he can't ruin this you'll be in my heart <laughs> why don't people like phil collins in that movie i never got that yeah i don't know like i know they made fun of him in south park having the oscar he's like oh phil collins you know but Honestly, I, I didn't mind that soundtrack. You know, it was actually kind of... You know, I didn't care for his wee dop, db, boobop, whatever, trash the camp song with NSYNC. That was just stupid. But, like, you know, friggin... You know, he's all right. Maybe it's because you guys go to the dentist and you always hear that song at the dentist on, like, top 40s and you're like, fuck the dentist. That's the only thing I equate it to. You'll be in my heart, Shaggy. You'll be in my heart. That's true. I know I'm in your heart. <laughs> Uh, so, Strangers in Paradise. Check it out from Terry Moore. Uh, I, I do intend to read more of it, so don't take my opening remarks as being like, I get it. It's just like, it was just one of those things that, like, I wasn't able to as easily just let go as some other things. Like, when you read a manga and someone gets punched into the sky, you're like, that's just manga. And this, I'm like, I guess I, guess I kind of came in feeling it's going to be, like, in indie comic life story. And all of a sudden, these fantastical things happen. And it's like, did it happen? 
Or does just no one care that it happened? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Something to think about. Something to think about when you're writing your stories, because you know we all we all want great things to happen. A lot of people have the apparently have the same problem with certain like horror movies and stuff. If you ever watch like Saw, and like the idea is that there's all these like crazy contraptions that people get stuck in and end up either like killing themselves or whatever. But the idea is like you really made all this like this. What? How many weeks did it take to build you? Didn't you just like start this yesterday? Like it's just like the suspension of disbelief is the idea. It's kind of like. The idea, like, uh, one of the podcasts I was listening to, it's, like, the person was so annoyed with that show. It's, like, at the end when the cops show up, why doesn't the bad guy just fly away? Like, that would make just about as much sense as the whole movie altogether. It's just, cops are here, whoosh, and it's just all of a sudden the bad guy could fly. It's, like, that makes just about as much sense as the bad guy being able to make all this in a weekend. You know, it's, like, okay, whatever. Suspension of disbelief. It's, like, sometimes you can shut your mind off and just watch things and be, like, yeah, that happened. Other times it's, like, eh. Why'd that happen? Like, you know, there's kind of a counter argument where it's like, well, first of all, there's talking animals. When does that happen? It's like, yeah, but they're, they're characters. It doesn't mean these things. It's, it's, it's a hard argument. Hard argument. TV dinner saying, hey, Katie, I'm really looking forward to seeing you and Shaggy at Van Calf. Uh, it's going to be my first con, and I'm counting on you guys to make it magical. No pressure. No pressure at all. Oh, it's going to be the single most magical time. Like the Magic Kingdom where I got these mouse ears, our presence at Van Gap is going to be glitz and glamour. Yes, it will. We're going to have a dandy of a candy time. I haven't planned anything yet. <laughs> because I'm just trying to finish this video that I've been working on all week. Going to be good times, though. We're going to be off at Van Gap. Uh Let's see. Can't wait for TCAF, says Fluxbox. Uh, I have to make the most epic cake I have ever attempted, and there will be much good times to be had. Yes! So you guys are wondering, TCAF, VanCAF, uh, I believe they're both happening in May. One early May, one later May. Uh, they're both kind of uh, independent creator-focused events. Comic Arts Festivals. Get to meet and greet with the people who make the things you like to read online. And maybe buy a thing or two to help them afford their plane tickets. <laughs> uh, what's going on? Wait, Shaggy and Katie have access to magic. Why aren't you sharing this wonder with us all? Because... It's it's like what Incredible says. It's like when everyone's special, then no one's special. So we don't want we want to keep the magic all to ourselves, so everyone else could be jealous. That's the message of Incredibles. If you watch that movie, yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys need to come to a con near me, please. Well, what con is near you, Idnis? You monster, says Chris the host. <laughs> For some reason, as soon as you said that, I like started thinking of lyrics from the Beauty and the Beast musical, and she's like, "Home is where the heart is." You monster! Something like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. The one you had saying. The one you had saying. Van Calf? Is Van Calf near you? Oh, Kineticon. Kinet I'm not even going to try pronouncing that anymore. I'm done. Kineticon. Kinetic Kineticon. Kinetic Kineticon. Kineticon or Kineticon? It's kind of like the connect for the Dreamcast. Any hoozles, what else is going on here on the chat? You monster, da -da -da -da, con near me, wonder with magic. Uh, so that's that thing I was just talking about. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I started posting on uh, Twitter. Very, very exciting news. You guys know if you watch your animes and your mangas and your life stories and everyone's like going out for lunch and they buy the little fish pancake thing that's full of bean sauce. Best news ever! Local grocery store near me now makes those fresh every day, and I'm like, this is a great place to live. I get to have the fish cake full of the bean, and the red bean, and the green bean. Maybe black bean too. So, great day for me. Come by Toronto and I can show you it. Maybe a tea calf. We can all get fish things because it's four bucks for a box of five, five bucks for a box of four. There you go, five bucks for a box of four. Fish cake things made right in front of you. The only other place I ever saw them was in San Francisco at the uh, Japantown Mall, which is one of the greatest malls I've ever been in. If you're a fanboy of anime and stuff and candy and swords, go to the San Francisco Japanese Town Mall. It's so, so, so fun. But Toronto has fish cakes too, so I don't need to go to San Francisco anymore. Ha, ha, ha. That being said, they also have a Hello Kitty shop in San Francisco, so you can't really beat that. It's got like these tubes of, for no reason at all, it has like these tubes of candy in the wall, like it's like a candy factory, and you're like, it's like a candy factory, but you're like, no, it's a Hello Kitty shop. Uh, but very similar to like kind of what they do in the Disneyland, where they have like stores with all these like robotic 
Mickey Mouse glove hands going by on a conveyor belt holding like toys and candy. You're like, this is so fun. Just being in the shop at the end of this ride. It led me in. So good. So good. We're probably going back uh, Comic-Con, oh, quick Comic-Con news, I guess. Um, so the passes for the regular folk had opened and closed pretty much within the same 10 minutes. Uh, they might be opening that up again sooner, but they're also opening the professional passes. So hopefully uh, that all makes sense and we can square that away. We'll be going to Comic-Con again this year. Have a good time, sell some books, talk to some people. And afterwards, we'll go to Disneyland like we always do when we're at Comic-Con. Because why not? Disneyland's fun. If you haven't gone yet, just come with us. It'll be great times. We'll be like, hey, we're all in Disneyland. And then we can like do a video of us all going, yeah. And we can freeze it, have the credits roll. It'll be a good time. Uh, greatest song ever, says in his talks. Not sure which one we're talking about. It's called CT Con and Com. Oh, Ottawa has a new Comic Con. Ottawa. Oh, Ottawa. That place. <laughs> I've been around Ottawa. Haven't been to any cons there, though. Done deal, says Fluxbox. That would be a done deal. Everyone should just go. Here's the thing about Comic Con too. Like, if you don't get into the con itself, you can still hang out in the town and pretty much have a decent time. Like, you should get a hotel too, of course. But um, there's enough going on. Maybe not for all the days. Like, maybe just one day. Like, if you're not in the con, or like, say you and your friends amongst you only got one pass to Comic Con. You're like, ah, what are we gonna do? Your friend or your two friends go to the con, and the rest of you hang out and then you trade. But there's like events and screenings and free Nintendo things and parties and booths and food and every restaurant is themed like comics at that time anyway so it's definitely it, it's a weird thing to say but if you can't go into comic-con itself the city of sandy san diego itself or at least that fun part of it is full of enough commercial crap to keep you busy and like felicia day is doing a talk over at that building and you don't even need to pay for it it's just all fun and of course if uh, trickster happens again which is cool trickster was uh, just across from the con at this uh venue it was kind of like uh, independent artists and stuff who were kind of like, oh, Comic-Con's really gone away from being about comics, which it has. It's about movie launches and toys. Um, but it was all independent artists like the, contributing content. Like there was an original Earthworm Jim drawing there. I'm like, ah, I want. I couldn't afford that kind of stuff. I did buy a deck of cards, though, that had like sexy drawings from like every country. And it's like interesting. <laughs> I forget who the artist was, but it's kind of like pop art style, kind of like the art of Shag. Not really though, but kind of like it. Anyway, if you know that style, it's not my art; it's some guy's art. Uh, let's see, it'll be coming to an epic theme for Disney World though. We'll need to come up with an epic theme for Disney World though. Shag, epic theme, like a theme song, like we're like, uh, business is too busy. That's why we come to Disney. Land. You could probably write that the rest of that song for me. It's not like I give you enough work to do. <laughs> but that'd be definitely coming up. Um, it's coming kind of July or August. I keep forgetting. It's basically my only holiday though. It's the only time I get to like go somewhere. Though I am going to Vancouver, so that'll be interesting. And Chicago. Man, I'm going to a lot of places this year. That's so weird. I can't afford that. <laughs> uh, what else we got on the old speaking spell? Uh, fish cake thing. So, um, big, 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 big news. Womenthology was released today officially in the shoppy shops where you can buy it with your money monies. Uh, it is a book full of art and comics and stories by the women's. And you can check that out. There's probably a website for it. I haven't actually done much research before. I just saw a bunch of people retweeting it. And yours truly, Katie, I believe, is in, in that book somewhere. Isn't that right, Katie? I was making the comics in the book. Exactly. So check out Womenthology. Um, I, I feel stupid that I don't really know much about who distributed it. I think it's like IDW or something like that. I'm not sure. Check it out though. Get yourself a copy full of, uh, lots of people support your independent artists all making a nice, big, super fresh book. Cool thing is I think along the bottom of the book, there's like, um, separate mini stories that go like these kind of single panel things or whatever all along the whole book. And there's also little biographies throughout too and little sketches and stuff. And I think it is a treat. Everyone's talking about it. You should be reading about it so you know what they're talking about it. Pick up your copy. There's going to be a bunch of like signings all over because like there's a mishmash of creators from all over the world. Um, North America mostly, but uh, all over the place working on it. So your local cons and events will have like stuff going on about that. Uh, Flock was saying, I hope I can find one tomorrow, but I'm uh, unsure they are in Quebec. So many weird laws for things. Quebec is a weird place. Usually when you enter a contest in Canada, it's like, everyone can answer except Quebec. You're like, oh, 
That's weird. Must suck to be in Quebec. Hmm. Quebec's kind of fun, though. It's got food. Mm. But that's just the situation of things. So check out that book. Uh, we'll talk more about it hopefully next week. Uh, if we get Katie back on the show. Because next week, this is episode 24, I think, of Shannon Hagen's Live. Isn't it? This is a big deal because that means next week is episode 25. Which means next week is a super special episode where we actually get to reading <laughs> the creepy porpoise story. Uh, oh, and it says, what's wrong with Quebec? And I'm like, nothing. They just have weird laws about comics and contests. Quebec doesn't like things that start with a C. That's why I learned. Anywho. <laughs> uh, 25th anniversary episode. Shane Hagen's life. Tell your friend. Tell your enemies. Tell your frenemies. Tell everyone because it's going to be a party and a half. We're going to have pff, cake, maybe. I'm going to eat a cake in front of you. And you guys can eat cakes too. Go to your local grocery store. Ask for a cake. You get like a 13-inch round vanilla or chocolate. Or if you're feeling crazy, get like Black Forest with cherries on top and the cherries inside. It's your day. You do what you want. But it's also our day. Get on the right on it. Happy 25th episode. And you eat it. And then uh, you can like film yourself eating it and send us clips. And then we can like have this like wrap-up video that's like some nice piano music. That's like inspirational. Kind of like people flying a kite. Cut to that too. And then it's like you go, oh. congratulations, Santa Hagen's live. For 25 episodes, we'll like intercut a bunch of people. We'll find some celebrities. It'll be a great video. <laughs> That'd just be weird if I did that. I just run around to people who don't even know me. I'm like, can you say congratulations? And then we cut together this great flashback of all the good times. But that would uh, take effort to do, so I'm not going to do it. it. Took me long enough to release that uh, talking to the camera wrap up. That was supposed to be done January 30th. And I released it like March. <laughs> I'm the worst. When it comes to deadlines. Uh, and it's either because I like tinkering with things too much or it's just trying to find resources. It's just a big pain. Shane Haggins is my age right now, says Weebot. Rockin' sacking Robots. 25. The episode after it will be my age, if that's a hint. <laughs> Woo, to feel old as Luxbox. Feel. Yeah, no, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a time. I don't think the show's gonna change too much. But coming up with uh, TCAF, I do believe we have some plans because we're gonna get like a ton, a metric ton of great guests coming in from all over the world to hang out. So we might as well film it. Um, it might not be on a Wednesday though; it'll be whenever TCAF is happening. So we we'll keep you guys posted. That's not for a good while now, so it's not until like May. So don't worry about it. But I think we can have a fun like big couch party. We have like two cameras cut back and forth and interview everyone It'll be a great time great time for learning uh and well basically yeah once that show comes around we'll basically if we know who's going to be on it if they all told everyone that they know that think they're cool then they can all come to the show and think we're cool and then we're the coolest show in town all of a sudden <laughs> wonder if we can get jeff smith on the show because he's going to be a tcaf we'll be like we'll show up at the airport with his smith this is one of the most generic names, so hopefully we get him. But we'll show up and get him in our car, and then we'll be like, he'll be like, oh, where are we going, guys? I'm like, oh, we're just taking you to this, uh, you got to do the radio circuit first. We're just taking you over to Katie's house. <laughs> He's like, who? <laughs> It'll be fun. Uh, hoping to make it to TCAF. You better be making it to TCAF, because TCAF is absolutely free, which most things in life aren't. Usually it comes with a catch. The only catch here is you have fun. So come to TCAF. That should be their, <laughs> that should be their motto on the poster. <laughs> Uh, happening over at the Toronto Metro, Toronto whatever library over at Young and Bloor Street, just a little north of that. Uh, it's going to be a ball. I keep saying a ball and a half. It's going to be a ball and three quarters. It's going to be so good. Uh, so check that out. Cake is a lie, says this person. Uh, I bring my can Canada uke. You have a Canadian ukulele? You can jam. I only know one song though, so I'm sorry. Unless you meant luck. <laughs> you should totally film it. Uh, Jess Fink, Anthony and Yoko, and so many others. Mm, it's going to be a thing. And his talk says, uh, I wouldn't be free for me because I'd have to go on a plane and get there. Yeah, just get a road. Well, you have to pay for a road trip too. But like, you should find like a community of like cool independent conquerors. Like, man, we're going to drive across country, man. We're going to go free comic show, man. And we're like, yeah. And then you guys have stories to tell and you can make a documentary about this. You know, a trip to TCAF. Across Canada, and there's like scenes of fireflies at night out the window of Saskatchewan, and beavers knocking things over and causing trouble to local damming situations and stuff. It'd be great. Great video. 
No, I mean my ukulele. My blue one is back in Australia, so I got a red one. <laughs> I got to Halifax. Ah, I see. Find the big box, put in some postage, problem solved. There you go. That always works for people. Live shippings. Don't hurt no one. Uh, coming up to the hour, so we'll probably just start wrapping things up here. Uh, I can go over one more. You guys are probably going to get a commercial in a second, though, be it for Uncle Ben's rice or for something else. Uh, so, last thing to talk about, Assassin's Creed Revelations multiplayer. I finally started playing it. Uh, so I had the game for a while, but I just never bought it because I didn't really play the Brotherhood multiplayer, and I wanted to try it first. And then I tried to play it online, and there was no one playing it, so I couldn't find a match. <laughs> So finally moved on to Revelations, and it is one of the most addictive multiplayer experiences. I've been playing it till like 4 in the morning, if not till 7 every night, which is bad, because I'm waking up at 2. <laughs> ah, I gotta fix this. Usually I do like these weird 3-day addictions to certain games, and then after that I go back to normal life. But like, it happened to me in Max Payne, happened with StarCraft, the first one. It's just like, damn... That's just addictive. So if you don't know what it's about, if you ever played an Assassin's Creed game, it uses all those mechanics of you climbing buildings, jumping, stabbing, hitting this and that, uh, except it makes it multiplayer, and you're dropped into a city uh, like old Rome or Venice and stuff like that, and you're wandering around through crowds of NPCs, like non-playable characters, who also look like you, because there's lots of duplicates in town, and you're trying to just blend in. Just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just one of these guys. And the whole time, you're keeping an eye out and using your sensors and your abilities to track down other real players who are also just blending in, having nothing going on. And you're trying to hunt them down, kill them for points. And based on how uh, stealthy you do it is how big your points are. So if you just run in and stab, sure, you get 100 points. But if you follow them for a couple blocks, you know, nice and quiet, and then go the last second, you know, you get like a good 600 points. So this is what you got to debate. Is it better to rush around and collect individual hundreds or is it going to take your time and get a 600 right then and there? Boom. Very interesting game. All the while, though, you too are being hunted. So you're wandering around keeping your eye out for a guy, but at the same time, there's a guy coming after you. No one's safe. Assassin's Creed, Revelations, multiplayer. Damn fun. Damn addictive. My only problem, uh, I wrote a little piece on it on uberfriendship.com. My only problem with it is, um, I think, uh, when... When you do team games, your team usually goes for the run and kill people right away method. So, like, I'm walking, nice and slow pace, taking forever. I'm like, I'm almost up at the guy. I'm like, 600 points in mine. And blah, 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 blah. some other guy rushes in and gets gets the kill, and we only get 100 points for it. I'm like, I hate teamwork. <laughs> so, there you go. It's, it's one of those games that I guess communication would be good. I don't really talk to people on Xbox Live anymore because I hate everyone. And, like, having to listen to the racist 12-year-olds is just not my cup of tea at 4 in the morning. So I just unplug no matter what I play, be it Halo. One of these days, though, we should get, like, a big LAN or a big online if we, if we know enough people who, like, play Assassin's Creed or any game, really. Like, we all get on Xbox Live and we're just, let's all do one private match so we don't have to listen to them children being all rude and racist. We can have a good old time. <laughs> That's the dream. That is the dream. Uh, let's get some last comments going on before we start shutting down. It's been an hour and I need food. Did I eat today? I don't know. I should eat something. <laughs> when you don't know if you've eaten, you probably hadn't. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Skyrim. Don't play Skyrim then, Shaggy. Maybe. Oh, if it's addictive, I guess. I don't know. Skyrim, like, I, I played a bit of Fallout 3, and it's just, like, I spent a couple hours playing it, and I've only, like, traveled the bottom left corner of the map. I'm like, there's so much more to do. I don't know where the fire ants come from. I don't care. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's when I go to work, 3 a.m. It would be hilarious if they made exactly the sound effect. <laughs> uh, do not listen to people be mean. or Well, they don't berate me. I just don't like listening to people talking in general. Because usually, here's the scenario. You're either going to hear someone whose music is really loud, so you're trying to play it. Because that's what it sounds like over your earphones. You're like, I guess that's music. It's not even dubstep. It's just noise. Um, second person you get is some guys who's like, eh, I get all the bets. Eh, I'm a ladies man. Like the whole time he's just like this bragger and you're like, I don't care. And you get the other kid who's racist and he's just like, me, 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 me. Why don't you hear a joke? And you're like, uh, mute, 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 mute. Like when Halo introduced the mute all, that was one of the greatest features. Like that's like, yeah, jetpacks, that's nice. Mute everyone in chat? Ah, oh, such a good idea. Assassin's Creed doesn't have that. You gotta individually go through them. I'm just like, ugh. So like, I'm trying to play, and I'm in the middle of Venice, and it's nighttime, 
both here and in Venice, and it's like sneaky sneak, and some guy's like, oh, man, I got a kill. And I'm like, stop yelling. I'm trying to focus. <laughs> oh, he killed me. That was unfair. I'm like, Ugh, gosh. I hate multiplayer. <laughs> oh, man. Missed so much Shanna Hannigan's. I just noticed how long your how long your beard is. You can actually go through the thumbnails of all the episodes and see how my beard grows from October. Um, or actually, no, it'd be from the end of November because November. Go from the beginning of November because I shaved for November, and then you can see how long it's got in. So I'm like, I can't. Yeah, yeah there you go. I like it because it forms my face to look more like Leonidas from 300. When people think I got like a strong chin, I'm like, Ngoosh. but then I shave for November and I look weak. And have a mustache. Now, oh, well, he's. Anywho, so let me just grab. What am I looking for? Fine, you know we're wrapping up the show when I say you should be buying this fantabulous book, Silly Kingdom, Alan Grimshaw's 211th birthday fantasy fun for the whole family, friends, and enemies. Get them for all of them. A uh, bunch of pages full of comic. Uh, sometimes you buy comics and there's no comics in it. You're like, what the hell? This book is full of words. Where's the comics? And you're like, what up? Game of Thrones, I don't get it. No, we don't We don't play that. We're giving you pictures and words and word bubbles. And it's fun and it's magic. So check that out. Alan Grimshaw's 211th birthday. You can go to sillykingdom-comic.blogspot.com. We are working on it, but go on Google and just type Silly Kingdom and you will probably get us first, if not a Swedish band on Facebook. Don't worry about them. Uh, do that. Enjoy the book. You can order for $10. $10 for the physical copy. That's like, people spend $10 on dinner, and they eat it once, and they're like, oh, that was good, and then it's gone. Well, so much. You buy this for $10, you keep it forever? Cherish it. You could share it with a friend, or tell them to buy a copy. That's good, too. You also get the digital PDF version that goes on all things. It's probably It probably goes on the Vita. You see those commercials, and the guy's all like, oh, I could play Modern Warfare wherever. No, you can read Silly Kingdom wherever if you get a Vita. You can put a PDF on that thing, probably. It'd be good times. Good use of the, of the technology. Uh, you can get that there. You can also, if you have emails about questions, if you have ordered the book and we have yet to ship it to you or something has gone wrong in the shipment, like you changed your house and you didn't tell us, uh, email sillykingdomcomic at gmail.com. We'll get back to you. There was one person recently who, no, the emails made it through to us for some reason. And they're like, it's my book. And I'm like, I don't know. What happened? <laughs> Weird situation. If you have one of those like education email accounts like .edu at .o.org .school of .fun whatever sometimes those sites have problems with our mass emails so don't use education emails anymore get a gmail <laughs> I'm sorry it's just honestly those education accounts just don't do good for no one they're like yeah you can't send files that are larger than a megabyte me I'm like I hate education <laughs> or their emails Check that out. Uh, any last words? Katie, what's going on? See you later, guys. I'm going to keep working on them here storyboards. And you all come on back next week for the 25th anniversary episode. We're going to wear city hats and eat a cake. That's right. So get your cake ready next week. Go to your local store. Get them the right. The, congratulations, 25th. It could be on a cupcake. I don't really care. But I just don't want you guys to be jealous while we're going to be eating a delicious cake during our anniversary episode. Thank you all for stopping by. Be sure to stop by every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern-ish for Shanahanigans Live, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, folks.